Hey, so um, if you're interested in what VRMS is or maybe it's a little bit confusing you, hopefully I can help clarify that a little bit with some basic intuition on what VRMS is. Uh, as for a like sort of a rig more rigorous mathematical approach, uh, I'll do that in the following video. But hopefully for this video, I'll just give you some kind of a graphical intuitive understanding of, of what it is and why it's important and why it's really helpful. And basically what it is, is it's a way, VRMS is a way to, for AC signals to give it sort of what the equivalent voltage would be in a DC signal in order to get the same effective energy out. So it becomes really helpful and it can simplify things a lot. Instead of using the sine wave, you just use this flat voltage and everything behaves like DC. Um, so you'll see, it, you'll see it all the time. But it may be a little confusing to understand what exactly it is and why it's the square root of 2 is in there and what, the, what that all means. So um, let's go ahead and start this off with a little graph here. Um, so here's my axis. On this side, I've got uh, voltage. Let's go ahead and draw that out. So this is um, V. And on this side over here, I've got, it's, it's time, but it's also in degrees. So um, we're not really concerned too much about the frequency here. We're just kind of looking at the amplitudes in the, in, in the, in the sine wave. But um, let's go ahead and draw this out, what our voltage is. So, our voltage is, let's say it's a function of time. So V of T is equal to B, which may be some bias, plus A, which is our amplitude, times cosine. And then there's a bunch of stuff in here, and there's a T. But for now, let's forget about all the stuff inside, and let's just, just think, consider this as, a, um, as, as what our voltage is. And in this case, let's go ahead and just say A is equal to 3. And let's go ahead and plot this out. Okay, so here's our voltage, and we're starting off, it's like a cosine function, and it's starting off at 3, and it's going down to negative 3, and up to um, positive 3 again. And, in, and ultimately what we're trying to do here is instead of, instead of thinking of this in terms of the sinusoidal function, we just want to give like an effective um, voltage that's going to, we can just sort of pretend instead of this sinusoidal function, we can pretend it's just a, um, a constant, like kind of like a DC voltage. That's where we're headed. But we're trying to get to, to so that it gives the equivalent energy. So in order to get to get the energy, we got to go to power first and then the energy and then back to power and then back to um, voltage. So let's go ahead and write out our equation for power. I'm going to use blue for power. So um, our power as a function of time is equal to our voltage as a function of time squared, and it's going to be divided by r. So um, in this case, for our situation here, r is going to be constant. Um, so we're really concerned about what this time varying aspect does to it. So let's just say that um, p of t, it, let's just say that um, p of t is going to be proportional to v of t squared, and just kind of forget about this r for now, because it doesn't really Add, add anything to this discussion. Um, so let's go ahead and plot out uh, P of T, which is just this squared. So here's our um, power as a function of time, and you can see that it's, um, it's going to be positive the whole time. So here we had the, the, um, the power or the voltage of 3, and of course we're squaring it, so it's going to go up to 9, and um, it's going to go down to 0 here at the 0 crossing. And when our voltage is negative 3, we're going to square it, it's going to go back up to 9. So um, so this is what our power is going to be as a function of time. Now, if we had, say we had a, um, a voltage that just flatlined across here, like a, just this DC voltage, it would correspond to this power that would be just sort of flatlined up here. And if we wanted to know what kind of energy that this, um, that this sort of flatlined power um, provided, well, our energy is, is in joules. And joules are in, um, is a watt second. So energy is, is, um, is that power times time. So, and this is a plot. We got power on this axis, time on this axis. So it's, it's like the area, the energy is like the area under the curve. So if I was looking at the total energy for, if we assume this constant um, voltage and this constant power across here with time, it would just basically, that energy would be represented by that whole, all that area that's underneath this curve here. But as you can see, we got this, this voltage is oscillating. And so we're not going to get the same amount of, of um, energy, the same amount of area under this curve. It's actually going to be quite less. And let's go ahead and just plot out what that area under this curve looks like. Um, so this would be the area under the curve between 0 and 360 degrees. And you can see, obviously, that's going to be less area than, than is under, under this, um, if, we, if, it, if it was DC instead of AC. So what we want to do is sort of convert this sort of a complicated um, area under here and something into something that's simple 
that w that we can that we can just give it give it um, like a approximation for a constant um, power here. And it turns out, if um, I can show you here, that if we just say, you might just look at this and say, well, it looks like it's got about half of that area under the under this curve than it would be under that line. And it turns out you'd be right. So this is like if we're just putting at the halfway point at 4.5. So it turns out that this area under this line here is going to be the same as the area under this curve. So it's it's and um, you can see that if we just kind of shade it in the area under the curve, and these are these are actually going to be equivalent, and they're going to be equivalent because basically that area that's above this line is going to be the same as this area that's below the line, and this area that's below the line is the same as this that's above it, and this area that's below it is the same as this that's above it here and it all those all kind of cancel out each other and so you can just approximate that that these areas are going to be the same if we just assume a constant power of 4.5 watts so what that tells us is that we can approximate this this oscillating power as just sort of a flat line power or average power so we can say p average is um, our p of our we could say p of our peak or p like that like if it was a dc um, divided by two. Okay, so we went to kind of the energy with the area under the curve. We are back to power now, and then we can go back from power to voltage and see what the equivalent voltage that that would give us this um, this scenario here. So, so we can just use this approximation that that power is going to be proportional to the voltage squared. So, instead of p average here, I can just sub in v rms squared, and we'll say that's equal to our peak. What gives us our peak power would be our peak voltage squared over 2. So from here, I can just take the square root of both sides, and I can just solve for my VRMS. And it's equal to square root of VP squared over 2, which is equal to. OK, so let's look at a little bit into what this means. But let me get, erase some of this stuff up here first. OK, so now we're back to our, our voltage plot here. And what, we're, what we've done here is we said, well, this is this was our peak um, voltage here. In this case, it was up it was up at three. And we're saying, well, what is the equivalent voltage that we can just assume is constant that is going to give us the equivalent energy that this voltage does? And we found that was um, VP over square root two. So let's go ahead and plot that out. So we've got our VRMS now, which is going to be less than um, VP. But we can just sort of assume that's going to be constant across. And this, this will allow us to sort of approximate this, this complicated varying signal as one that is just constant. And um, some place to, you might, that might help connect this, so let's just say that this voltage, our VP, was equal to 170 volts. Well, that means that our VRMS would be equal to this divided by square root 2, which would be 120 volts. So that is what is in your outlet. It's, it's actually the peak to peak of. Um, the voltage coming out of your outlet is at 170, but our VRMS is at 120 because that sort of the, gives the equivalent energy of what a constant 120 volts would give. So that's a little bit of sort of the intuition where we get VRMS from and, and why it's so important. But if you want to get into the math a little bit, when we found this p average, we just sort of graphically saw it was it was p sub p over two. But um, um, it's going I'm just gonna nerd out and show how we actually get that using the um, using an integral for for that value instead. And it's not too bad. It's, um, it's kind of fun. So go ahead and um, check that out if, if you are so inclined. But um, until next time, take care.